You know, science is not stagnant. It's dynamic. It scampers along towards the finish line, often having to jump hurdles and uh, avoid falling into pits. But uh, just when the finish line seems to be within reach, another bump or pothole can appear, and that has to be contented with. This is especially the case when it comes to studies about nutrition and food safety. Just when we think that we have a handle on a problem, some new information may come to light that requires the situation to be re-evaluated. It seems we now have to take a fresh look at the ups and downs of the artificial sweetener sucralose, which you may know as Splenda. I was fully in support of the approval of sucralose in the late 1990s. All the required toxicity studies had been done, and the evidence indicated that the compound passed through the body unchanged. It was hundreds of times sweeter than sugar, so very little was needed to sweeten foods or beverages. Sucralose was truly non-caloric and promised to be an effective weapon in the battle of the bulge by cutting down on calories. But no matter how well safety studies are carried out, they can offer no guarantee that problems will not occur once a product is out in the marketplace and is being consumed by millions of people. That's why scientists keep investigating, as they should. And these investigations have revealed some concerning issues. We have learned that sucralose can disrupt the microbiome in our gut, alter the permeability of the intestines, affect the functioning of some hormones, and cause leukemias in male mice. Furthermore, it doesn't pass through the body unchanged. In the gut, some is converted into an acetylated form that has been shown to cause breaks in DNA, although there is no evidence that such damage is passed on as cells divide. In other words, it is not a mutagen. The acetylated form also inhibits enzymes in the cytochrome family whose function is to remove foreign substances from the body. Now, it must be emphasized that all these effects are laboratory findings, and there is no clinical evidence that sucralose causes harm in people. However, neither is there compelling evidence that artificial sweeteners have a long-term effect on weight control. While we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater, we may want to throw out some of that water if it is artificially sweetened. And that, for today, is our cup of joe.